is a, a Riesling. Okay. Riesling is a, a grape that originates in Germany, grows very well here in Ontario. Back in the 60s and 70s, the grapes that were planted here were Concord grapes, mainly used for Welch's grape juice, but mm. not very good for making quality wine. First thing you want to do is put that, put your nose right in the glass and sniff. So why are we swirling the wine? Because in wine chemistry, wine is in an anaerobic state, there's no oxygen in the bottle. And so those fruity aromatic compounds in wine are called esters. Okay. They become volatile when they're exposed to oxygen. So if you just open the bottle and pour a sample and drink it, it won't taste as good as if you put a little bit of wine in the glass and swirl it. So while the wine is coming into contact with the oxygen in the glass, okay. basically those fruity aromatics vaporize. You get your nose in the glass and that's where you can really start to experience the flavor of the wine. The nose can sense a couple thousand different things. The tongue only tastes four things, sweet, sour, salt, and bitter. There's no yeah. salt in wine, so it's only the other three. So that's where wine tasting really begins. Now you want to take a little sip, uh, hold the wine, move it around your mouth for a couple of seconds. Uh, everybody has a different amount of taste buds in different areas of the tongue. So you want to be able to coat the tongue almost like a mouthwash moving around. And there's a couple of things that you're sensing. You're sensing that balance of sweetness from the fruit and the acidity from the fruit. And then the alcohol you sense a little bit in your throat and your chest. Mm -hmm. Now those three things need to be in balance for the wine to be well made. So you want to have, if there's too much acidity, the wine's gonna be sour, it's not gonna be pleasant to drink. If there's not enough acid, the wine will taste flat, won't be good either. So you can see that this wine has that perfect balance of fruit and acidity mm -hmm. and the alcohol. Again, if it's too much alcohol, people call it alcohol forward or hot, we say. It's not, it's out of balance. So the first thing I look for in quality wine is balance. Can you sense those three things and are they in balance? So the first thing you sense when you take a sip is that sort of the sweetness at the tip of your tongue. Mm -hmm. And the acidity you feel at the sides of the tongue, that gets the saliva rolled. Mm -hmm. It makes a good palate cleanser. So when your wine, your mouth fills up with saliva, you know that's a, a nice higher acid wine. So yeah, have, have another sip and enjoy it. Nine percent of all the wines in the world are rosé wines. And rosé wines can be made from any red grape. Mm. And so some of them are very pale in color, and some of them are a little bit darker in color. That's going to depend a little bit on which grape was used, because some grapes have thinner skins, like Pinot Noir or Pinot Noir. Some grapes have thicker skins, like uh, Cabernet Franc or Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about the, how we make rosé, it's called the Sanye method. Now some wineries, they cheat, they have a barrel of red lying around and half a tank of white lying around. Mm -hmm. and they throw them together and say, here's the rosé. Well, those are not, that's not the proper way to make rosé and, and none of those wines have high taste very good. <laughs> Or I've heard winemakers say, and it makes me cringe, they'll get a batch of red grapes that come in that aren't that good quality. They'll say, ah, we'll just make a rosé. And they taste just as poor. They taste astringent, they taste bitter, or then they dump sugar into it to make it drinkable, because mm -hmm. otherwise it wouldn't be that good. We use a French method called saigné, which means bleeding method. So we took those Merlot grapes, we let them sit, we crushed the grapes, and we let them sit in the juice for about two days to extract this beautiful color. Then we pressed off the skins, we took half of the juice, we put it in stainless steel tanks for fermentation. Mm -hmm. Stainless steel preserves the aromatics. You'll see when you smell this wine, it's a very aromatic wine. It's a dry wine, but very aromatic. The other half, we put in French oak. And so the French oak gives a bit of spice. Okay. So then we blended them together. So I call this one fruity and spicy. Fruity and spicy. And now give it a good swirl. And now put your nose back in the glass and you'll see how that opens up. Wow. So I'm happy to see that you're holding the glasses the correct way as well, which is by the stem or by the base. Uh, you don't want to grab the glass by the bowl. For two reasons. Ah. One, you want to be able to see the wine. You don't want to, these are all hand polished, right out glassware. You want to be able to see the wine. You don't want to put fingerprints on it. And more importantly, your hand is uh, 37 Celsius, so I guess that's sort of about 98 Fahrenheit. Yeah. You don't want to warm up the wine too much either. So you want to keep your hand away from Burning. away from the uh, the bowl and this red wine has an extra element a sensory element that we're tasting called tannin and so tannin is a little bit of dryness you know when you're having a red wine mm -hmm. so red 
tannin comes from the grape skins. So all the juice from wine grapes you squeeze is clear. So you can make white wine out of red grapes too. Mm -hmm. Champagne is an example. They use Pinot Noir, which is a dark grape. You squeeze the juice. They don't use the skins. How do we make red wine versus white wine? Is white wine, we take the skins, we press the juice, we throw the skins away, we take that juice, we, we ferment it. Mm -hmm. That fructose and that glucose, the sweet sugars in grape juice, which is one of the sweetest uh, fruit juices, mm -hmm. they convert into ethanol alcohol. So you go from a sweet juice to a dry alcoholic beverage. Now we don't want the skins in white wine touching the juice during the process because they're very bitter. But red wine, how we get the color is we press the juice out of the skins and we put the skins back in the juice during the fermentation process. So while the wine is fermenting, it's extracting color and flavors from those red grape skins. Mm -hmm. When the wine has gone from sweet to dry, we press off the skins, throw them away, and we have a red wine left over. Wow. So basically, white wine production, we remove the skins pre-ferment. Red wine production, we remove the skins post-ferment. Mm. So there's more complexity here because we have that extra element of flavor and tannin. Now, tannin is that little bit of a drying effect. You, you, yeah. So when you have a, a young red wine, mm. which is very tannic and it makes your mouth real dry, you have a piece of cheese. That's and right. when you have no food in your mouth, <laughs> the amino acids in your saliva are bonding with the tannin in the wine and it's pulling the saliva from your tongue and drying your mouth. So wine. when you have a piece of cheese or a piece of meat, a hamburger or steak or something, you chew on that and take a sip of the wine, now the tannin will bond with the protein in the food, the wine will taste softer and fruitier on your palate. Because we have that extra element now, that structural element of tannin, we need a larger bowl, more oxygen exposure to smooth that wine out. So, This particular wine is a blend of four red grapes. And so each grape has its own flavor. You think of like a yellow apple or a green apple or a red apple. They, they all have different flavors. Yeah, you want to swirl everything except sparkling. And so there's Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Syrah, and Petit Verdot. Those originally all come from France. And each one uh, gives flavors. Then we put them in oak barrels for a year and a half each. Okay. So the oak barrels give it an extra element of flavor, but more than that, extended oak aging makes the wine smoother and easier to drink. The barrels are porous and they breathe, so there's a little bit of oxygen bubble transferring through the staves of the barrel. So some wineries will put the wine in oak for a month or two just to say it's oak to sell it a little bit more expensive, but then they taste very astringent, they're not smooth. Mm -hmm. Leaving it at a year up to two years in oak makes the wine smoother and easier to drink as well. So. You can give that a, a what's, the, what's the max amount of time can you put it uh, in a barrel? Oh, you, you, you can put, it depends on the quality of the grape, but you can put up to up to five years in it. Usually it's about a year or two, mm. a year or two in the barrel. So there's a lot of flavors here. Good, huh? Yeah, good. Yeah, lots of flavors, so you can oh, sense yeah. all those flavors. So now oh, yes. you're yeah, sensing I mean, the fruit so. and you're sensing the acidity, you've got the alcohol and you have the tannin, that little bit of dryness on your tongue, but this, it's smooth. It's a smooth is, dry. They're smooth tannin. It's not astringent. It's not bitter. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't even need to have food with that wine. It's an easy yeah. sipper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you might want to try now a piece of meat or cheese. Mm -hmm. Take a piece and chew on that, and while you're chewing on it, take a sip of the red wine and uh, see how that evolves in your mouth. It's all chemistry. Oh, wow. It's all chemistry I and, 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 and I so this is all, all now it depends again on which wine goes with which which food. The, the Riesling we had at the beginning is probably the easiest wine to pair. It goes with eight out of ten dishes. Because Riesling is a higher acid wine, it pairs with anything that has a little more acidity. Or anything you'd say squeeze a lemon on, mm -hmm. Riesling will go well with that. Riesling. Also so salmon or yeah, any, like fish. any kind of seafood mm -hmm. and things like that. Also, because of the high acidity, it goes with creamy dishes. If you had like an Alfredo sauce or something very creamy, the Riesling cuts through the cream. Yeah. And because Riesling is a little bit lower in alcohol and has that little bit of off-dry fruitiness, mm -hmm. it's great with spicy food. So if you have a Thai or a curry, 
for something spicy, oh, the yeah. Riesling will bring down the burn. If you have a spicy food with a red wine, it'll augment the spice, mm. it'll make it even hotter. <laughs> so, you wow. gotta be, really there's nice. a lot of science with uh, what to pair with uh, wow. what food as well. Liquid gold, we call this. This is ice wine. And we literally have a couple of gold medals. We won two gold medals, Canada-wide. This is for our Riesling ice wine and our Vidal ice wine. So I'm going to talk about the Vidal ice wine. Vidal is the most planted grape here in Ontario. It's a hybrid grape. It's an American father and a French mother. Very winter hardy and mainly used for ice wine. Ice wine is a Canadian trademark. 90% of the ice wine on the planet is made in the Niagara Peninsula right here. So why is it called ice wine? 85% of grapes are water. So you get that juice to make wine. Okay. So when the water freezes, we pick these grapes in the winter time when the grapes are frozen on the vine. So when we squeeze them, there's no water coming out, just a little bit of sweet nectar. Mm -hmm. For every 10 frozen grapes, we get one drop, one milliliter of liquid. So to make this small bottle, this is a half size bottle, 3,750 frozen grapes. Wow. Where I could make this bottle with like five or 600 grapes. So that's why these are half the size and twice the price. Mm. But you just have a little bit, uh, an ounce or two. This is a 12 ounce bottle. And so we pick them at night because they have to be frozen when they're picked. Mm. We have to pick the grapes between minus eight and minus 14. If our field's minus seven, we can't pick them. Mm -hmm. Once they confirm, we go out and we hand pick them at night. At night, why? Because the sun hits the grapes during the day, so they melt, unmelt, melt, unmelt. They must be picked frozen. Mm -hmm. So you're out there kneeling in the snow, minus eight degrees, the lights of a tractor with little plastic gloves, picking these frozen grapes. The sugar content of the grapes determines ice wine as well. So. In North America, we measure grape sugar by a term called BRIX, B-R-I-X. So to make regular wines like this, the BRIX level of the sugar in the grapes at harvest is about 20. And out of 20 BRIX, I can make a 12 or 13 percent alcohol wine. Mm -hmm. To put ice wine on the label, the BRIX has to be a minimum 35. So almost double the sweetness of regular wine. And so a lot of those rules go into place in putting this together, making the wine. Now, it can't be picked lower than minus 14 because at minus 15 or more, the grapes are completely frozen, you can't get any juice, and people have broken their press trying to, because wow. it's almost like a stone. Yeah. Wow. So that's why we call it liquid, liquid gold. Liquid gold. Um, that feels good. <laughs> good. 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 Mm. Wow. Wow. Mm. That's it. I ain't never had that. Mm. You've never had ice wine before? I've never had ice wine. So good. That's delicious. This is literally my first time ever having ice wine. That is delicious. Wow. Really nice. Wow. So this is a great uh, dessert wine. You had it before? In Omar? Yeah, it's really delicious.